Now, as I mentioned, one of the things that gave me a really good perspective of how war is waged and on the grand scale, right, was an article that I read in the late 1990s or early 2000s talking about um, World War II and that the UK was extremely happy and very optimistic that they were going to win World War II because the United States joined them on the side of the allies, if you want to call it, of UK and Russia. And the reason, I believe, Churchill was extremely happy that the United States had joined the war and he knew that they were going to win World War II was because as soon as the United States joined the war, then the GDP of the Allies surpassed that of the Axis, mainly Germany, Italy, and Japan, right? So GDP was one of the metrics that this article was talking about, the main metric that this article was talking about of uh, how World War II unfolded and it was obvious that the Allies were going to win, okay? So having that in mind, having that in mind, I thought it was pretty important to take a look at the GDP in play right now, okay? Now, keep in mind that the GDP in play right now, the official GDP is a year or two or three behind what's happening at the moment, and GDP doesn't account for everything, right? Because the cost of, let's say, a hammer for the U.S. military might be 10 times or more than what a cost of a hammer in the Russian military would be, right? So if you consider that, then U.S. GDP could be 10 times higher than that of Russia, but they buy, their purchasing power would be the same, right? So we have to keep that in mind, and that's another layer another step that we'll look at in future mapping live streams right now i just want to give you more of the broader picture of what we're looking at and we're going to look at gdp gross domestic product and ppp which is purchasing power parity what your money can buy per capita really gdp per capita where we can think about it that's the data of grab so far right Canadian Arctic. I reside in Ottawa, Canada's capital. Toronto is Canada's foreign capital. Joke of the day. Funny. <laughs> okay, gang. Take a look at this. Take a look at this. Oh, yeah. Hold on. Before we do this, should I do it? No, we'll do a little outro at the end. Now, here we go. Okay. Here is one data I grabbed, right? This is really important because I was talking to some relatives like month and a half ago and i mentioned this and they started laughing at me because they're very much pro-ukraine in the russia ukraine war and they're very upset at russia that russia bad and ukraine will win and stuff like this and i mentioned to them that according to the world bank russia is now a high income country right it's a high income country according to the world bank as of last year or this year okay so they were very upset when I told them this. And I said, look, man, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not the one deciding this. It's the World Bank that was stating this, right? So that's how fast things are shifting right now. Well, where Russia is gone from an upper, upper middle class and some parts of Russia, lower middle income, to a high income country, okay? extremely important because some of the data that we're going to look at right now is not going to reflect that it's not going to reflect that right and things are rapidly changing rapidly changing same with iran iran's growth rate last year i think was seven percent or something like this huge 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 right and china here is upper middle income right but in certain parts of china it is definitely high income region right so Again, this is macro, micro, you can take a look at, and it's, and it's fluid, it's dynamic. It's going to be changing in the next few years. Okay. Important, important. Now, the next map, boop, take a look at this. This is GDP per capita, PP, uh, PPP, which is uh, purchasing, uh, purchasing power parity. <laughs> 
right? What you can get, what you can buy, uh, standard of living in a certain country, what it's all about, right? And by the way, sorry about I'm not reading the chat too much. The no pill man, finance capital, read Lenin's uh, imperialism explained. Okay, good, good, good. You guys are talking to good, 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 good. Ukraine is coming to the end of the war. End of the war indeed. Okay. So this site, and by the way, should I give you guys links to these things here? I'll, you know what? I'll give you guys links to this stuff. Um, I'll give it to you in, where is the other map? Oh yeah. Oh, here we go. Okay. This is the first map The here. I'll give you the link here and I'll put it in. I'll put it in both uh, a sensor tube and, and, uh, and Twitch. So here's a link to the first map, this map. Okay. It's going to the world bank blog. Boink. Okay. And I'll provide these links in the description of this video, uh, after the live stream within a couple of days after the live stream. Okay. Here is the map for this graph that I'm showing, but it's going to link you up. Link us up, awesome Elder God. Here's a link to this graph. And this graph is, you know, the, the money and stuff like this. But this is the important one because if you go up here in the top here, this is the line graph. You can go to bar, but you can hit map. And I'm going to hit map. Boink see that okay this is sort of another version of what we saw and it's basically gdp per capita and it's an interactive map the link that i provided so you can go hover on the countries and see what their gdp is right and i think it shows the ppp as well okay but we're going to look at a table of that information anyway right so it's a nice interactive map if you want to take a look at what's going on this is data from 2023 it's changed in 2024 Okay, it's changed in 2024, right? Now, uh, so nice map, nice interactive map. Okay, here is doink, the uh, from the same website. It's the purchasing power PPP for the different countries. Now, so you have to take these this data with a huge grain of salt, right? Because Luxembourg is the best. But Luxembourg doesn't have any military might, right? So it's a sort of a not just one variable that you can look at in this global war that we're talking about. You have to put it into context, right? So great, Luxembourg has a huge PPP uh, purchasing power, right? So does Singapore, but Singapore is on the sidelines. Ireland is pretty, pretty high, but Ireland is. If you look at it in a certain light, it's in a civil war. It's having serious problems, right? Uh, John on sensor tube, uh, China, Russia, and BRICS countries, pink color. Uh, I'll show you once, once we start taking the stuff down, right? Not pink, but they're uh, um, yellow. Okay, they're yellow. Okay, so you can look at that, and that's this part is right below the map, and you can see the United States. Uh, it says, you know, for 20, 2023 is 81, whatever the values are that they are measuring, right? Plutino on Twitch. Hi, Chicho. Hi, Chad. Hi, Chicho. How are we? Um, are we talking PPP? Then I only read the Big Mac Index. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We talked about the Big Mac Index. We talked about the Big Mac Index, right? Um, da, 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 da. Gandalf, Mr. Potter. I think Putin is one of the best leaders in recent history, though I don't like everything he did. But you can argue with uh, that without Putin. It's unlikely Russia can stand against NATO countries combined. Uh, Russia is standing up against NATO countries because Russia also has China, North Korea, and Iran behind it, just like Ukraine, United States had the collective West behind it, which is by all accounts on paper, NATO should have kicked the living daylights out of Russia, but they failed, right? But they failed. Platoon, you know, chat on you. Oh, yeah, we read that. Bup, 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 bup. Okay, now the next map. Oh, we did that. Doink. Now, check this out. This is World Bank information, right? Did I share the other link as well? Let me see. Yeah, I shared that one. Here's the World Bank information, the news. 
that the World Bank, and man, my relatives were really pissed when I told them this, that according to the World Bank, okay, Russia is now the fourth largest economy in the world. And my relatives, when I told them this, you know, the ones that are, you know, Russia bad, Ukraine win-win, uh, there's a link on SensorTube, here's a link on Twitch. Uh, they were really pissed, and I, again, I told them, it's not me saying this, it's the World Bank saying this, that Russia is the third or fourth largest economy in the world. When according to the World Bank, China's number one, and then you got United States, India, Russia, and Japan, right? So China and Russia combined would be 41 trillion. United States and Japan, those are the two that we have with the orange combined would be what is that 33 trillion and then you can add uk uh uk germany france but they're declining right they're declining uh china is also to a certain degree is declining the growth rate is not picking up as fast as it was before going so this news was really important this was one of the most important news stories that came out in the last year that the World Bank is now classifying Russia as the fourth largest economy in the world. Some people, when you talk, talk to them, they'll come out and say, oh, that's just war military spending. Well, what do you think the Western world has been doing, right? Russia is not fighting a war against nobody. Russia is fighting a war against the collective West. So the collective West has been spending up the yin-yang on military. So writing off Russia becoming the fourth largest economy in the world because they're in war economy mode not full war economy but pretty much full of war economy dismisses the fact that the western world is in war economy mode as well right they're trying to be anyway okay important news one of the most important pieces of news that came out or data that came out in the last year right yeah robert newton as uh, mccain would say their giant gas station uh, disguised as a, as a country or some crap like this, right? Ronnie Chicho, what are some U.S. collapse-proof investments opinions? Uh, uh, metals, gold and silver. Uh, and if you have cryptos, you may want to lighten the load or hold your position. Ronnie, I can only think of Bitcoin, but maybe investing in international fund stocks uh, could be better no uh i would not be in international stocks if you're going to be in the stock market a u.s stock market would be it if you want to uh, not see the value your purchasing power decrease because stocks will go up if the u.s dollar goes on the downturn but i think u.s dollar is going to get strong for a year or two right uh, Gandalf on sensitive China plus Russia is 41 trillion USA plus India is also 41 trillion but India is not in, all in with United States uh, right Japan is but India is not India is trying to play both sides okay if India goes all in on the side of the United States Pakistan is going to go all in on the side of Russia okay no doubt about it uh, we got Bangladesh on the other side as well, right? Miss Balloon Hands, how are you doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, CTE, but don't India with the West. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Yep. Uh, Alagos, spending on military in 2023 could have given everyone on the planet uh, 298 pounds each. I, I could have used that. Bought me some nice comics, right? Plurtino, how are you doing? Global PMI is at all-time lows. Many nations aren't manufacturing to the amount they used to. Yeah, we're going in a grind right now. We're going into a grind right now. We'll see where it takes us. We'll see where it takes us, right? Now, we talked about this. Keep this in mind, Russia, right? Russia is now the fourth largest economy in the world, okay? Now, let's go back to GDP. Here's US GDP according to this data, this website. Let me see if I can find it. Here we go. Here's the website. Uh, right now, this is the one I've got locked on uh, Russia. So 
uh, because we're, I'm going to show you Russia as well. There's a link on SensorTube. Here's the link on Twitch. So this is this was a good website as well, right? So here's GDP, United States GDP, and it breaks it down at the bottom here. You know, full year GDP and different things. Uh, their GDP is right. You can see the GDP of the United States kicking up constantly, right? Here is Russia, right? And remember the data we looked at before, right? Well, okay, let me kick this down. Let me kick this up, right? Russia is now a high income country, right? Dunk. Same type of data shows you can hover it, interactive, right? Purchasing power. Russia is the fourth largest economy. And then you get to here, here's United States GDP, right? And then here's Russia's GDP, right? So it's not showing it as the trend is not as obvious, right? And then here's a map comparing Russian GDP versus US GDP, right? And US is this line up here, and Russia's GDP is the one down here. So according to this website, the data, and it's if you read the top, the gross domestic product GDP in Russia was worth uh, was worth uh, two trillion dollars. I'll I'll show you a table on this. Two trillion dollars, U uh, S in two, uh, 2023, according to the official data for the World Bank, the GDP value of Russia represents one point. 92% of the world economy, right? Now, if you kick this out down, that's the title there. And then read the top up here. And here's what it says regarding the United States. The gross domestic product in the United States was worth $27 trillion, uh, dollars, right? In 2023, according to official data from World Bank, right? So United States, $27 trillion, according to this website, uh, this data is a nice website, by the way, for 2023. Russia was only two trillion dollars, so less than ten times, right? So United States was more than ten times the GDP of Russia. And here's what it looks like if you do a comparison on the graphs, right? United States in the top, Russia in the bottom. Now, you could taste take this at face value, but obviously this is not really the case, right? Here is GDP, and this is from the World Bank as well. I'm going to give you this. Let me give you this site as well. I'm going to give it to you as archive because this was a paywall. Uh, you know, you have to join to be to see this data, but I grabbed it as an archive. So here's the archive. Here's the archive. Okay, and I believe this was World Bank as well. Hold on, let me do a little check. Or World Economic... Uh, la, 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 la. WorldEconomics.com. Okay, so if you look at this data, you can see that. Wait a second. China. So data varies a little bit, changes a little bit, right? China's GDP, right, or GDP PPP estimate was forty, thirty-nine trillion. United States twenty-six trillion. Uh, India twenty trillion. Russia eight trillion. And then Japan. So Russia is still number four, right? Right? Russia is still number four. And you got China, again, combined is going to be 48 trillion. You got the United States with 26 trillion, and then Japan. Germany is 5 trillion. So just going by what we have up here, you can add up the top. Here, let me show you this. The top orange countries which would be germany in there france in there italy most likely in there right if we bring it up again what do we have we have in this map based on the color scheme we have up here right of whose side who's on you got china russia uh no korea doesn't work okay so china and russia are basically taking on United States, Japan, Germany, um, France, UK, Italy, Turkey most likely with uh, the Allies, but they're trying to play both sides to a certain degree. Italy, uh, Korea, okay, and then you can add Spain or whatnot in there as well. And then just below that, I think around 2 trillion would be Canada 
and and whatnot so you can start adding up those numbers to get a better perspective of of uh, the money involved on either side going at each other right and continue to keep in mind that the purchasing power right a hammer in the unit for the u.s military costing 500 versus a hammer for the russian military costing five dollars right what that what that gdp ppp would buy in your relative countries right important 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 Plutino Chicho, I just want to say in regards to the bar chart chart about Russia, in my work we go to uh, 2009 forward for monetary data. 2012 was kind of weird with Russia. I don't know why I work in Asia markets. Cool. Let's take a look at that here. Let me bring that up again. You know, boink. Right? Well, this would have been the coup in Ukraine, right? 2014 over here the third bar over would be the coup in ukraine and then some shit at the fan in ukraine and you saw confidence in russia maybe dropping right the attack on nato you know becoming clear that nato was going to start arming ukraine right maybe 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 right the python Cantrell, I have to head out. Great stream, very informative. Uh, Python on sensor tube. Salutations, thank you for popping in. Uh, and fun data, really. We're not looking at a moral perspective of the brutality of this wars and genocides taking place. We're just looking at data. We're being academics about this right now. Salute, right? Now, this was important and for shits and giggles i also grab what we see on wikipedia there yeah, i'll provide a link for wiki as well uh, but you can tell that wikipedia the data is so far off it's not even funny right so here's the wikipedia one i don't even know if i'm going to include this in the data in the stream but you can see that uh, you know they're calling United States as the highest China, Germany, Japan, India, United Kingdom, France, Brazil, Italy, Canada. They got Canada above Russia. That's low IQ red rat shit right there, right? So Canada GDP more than Russia, according to Wikipedia. And you can take a look at their uh, 20, uh, 2024 estimates as well, right? Which, again, it's silly it's silly okay so not really worth uh, going by but worth wikipedia all <laughs> god says but worth noting that some people are looking at this information and basing decisions right making predictions based on false data right so there, there's i wrote an article uh, one of the first articles i ever wrote when i started blogging where I said basically that, um, and it was called Anomalies, Prisons, and Geophysics, how, how governments use data and how to stop them. I've referenced it many times, but one of the things I mentioned during that process is your data analysis is based on three things, right? The integrity of the data, right? The ability for you to process data, data and the interpretation of that data. Or how you're going to interpret that data the integrity a lot of people are using data sets that the integrity is completely flawed right compromised so there are people actually in high positions of power in many countries that are using data to make uh, future predictions and investments for nations that are completely flawed right that's why it's really important to have multiple sources of information. And that is why it's important to make sure there's no censorship, suppression, suppression of information wherever you live. Because as soon as the centralized powers suppress information, then all they're going to feed you is faulty data, right? That should be obvious what, what was going on in Ukraine in the last two and a half years, right? And what has been happening in the Middle East for the last few decades right 
important, important, important. That's what I wanted to sort of present in today's mapping stream. Going again from the micro to the macro and start looking at the numbers involved in these con in this global conflict in this world war, right? In this world war. Unfortunately, that command is active on here. Ba -ba -ba. Follow it. I don't know. Whoop. Diversity. Diversify your money. Plutino says, diversify your investments. Indeed, indeed. Right? 